Clumsy is clean and nice. It's so much changes thanks to them. Both it is being aware of one's own mind and not taking things too personal. What is what is freedom? Well, freedom is the chance to pick the moment with the least possible <laughs> blocks from the inside or from the outside. It's the most important thing that exists because only with the space can there be development. It's also the natural state of beings. If we remove all veils, all hindrances, we are naturally free. It also gives the greatest joy freedom from the ego illusion like when we make love and forget ourselves or drive fast or things like that or is a uh, greatest joy we have and also the freedom of being able to create things on the outer level is very important because there are certain hindrances given by the fact we just have one body and we are in one place at one time but still freedom can be lived very very widely and uh, you are saying about yogis uh, lifestyle and uh, lay people lifestyle and in our centers is there a difference mm -hmm. it's more a question of what we do when I mean yogihood should is based on something it's based on the Theravada level that we that we know how to behave and it's built on the Mahayana level that we think of others and that we are able to see the world as a dream and not take things too personally. So when these things function, then starts the diamond way. And here the diamond way, you can say it's, it works in the way that... Uh, well, diamond way, it's, it's the view that we have. When we do our work, you know, go to <clears throat> go to our office or do our other works, you know, then of course we are lay people, we are working with the situation the way it is. While in our view, the way we see it all and so on, we are yogis. And we see everybody as a potential Buddha, we see, try to know our mind through every situation. That's the yogic aspect. So these two belong together. Today, yogi is not about having long hair that you don't comb and stuff like that. They did that in Tibet because otherwise the monks and the nuns would get all the get get all the food. So they had to look a bit extreme and wild, so people would notice them. 
But here, if you go to a rock concert, you see lots of long hair. It's not so impressive anymore. Today, also, we have a social state that takes care of everybody and so on. So, so the outer thing is not important anymore. However, the monks and nuns still have to follow the <coughs> 254 and the five <coughs> and the 350 rules that Buddha gave. So they stay their own group. They cannot. They don't really get into the integration like that. Because the thing was that all these rules were really given for them to stay in their monasteries with their own type, with their own people. So for that reason. You know, lay and yogis move more and more together, but uh, but monks and nuns still keep their monasteries and keep their lifestyle. And uh, what is uh, respect together with the freedom? Yeah. Well, respect is just uh, giving other people their space. That means seeing in any given situation who is most involved, who has got most of their intensity, most of their life involved, and then giving space to them. That's really important. I mean, there's always something happening in your own backyard and there's something happening five houses away in your own backyard. What people should be have the most possible chance to decide what happens there. Yeah, and also, of course, knowing people's Buddha nature, being aware of that. That's on the absolute level. Giving people a chance to play their best roles. Put them in situations where they can do that. Then help them to identify with them until it really becomes their nature. На самом деле, мое желание относительно вас всех очень простое. Я хочу, чтобы вы так много, что много научились, чтобы вы смогли бы видеть все причину последствия. You know, they have, they don't like each other. Знаете, они друг друга не любят. So an Indian comes into the plane. Indian is приходит into the plane. That's a Pakistani right. That's a Pakistani left. Pakistani is left, he is right. Pakistani. They push him and they show him they don't like him. They push him and they show him they don't like him. So after a while, he gets nervous and gets up and says, "I'm going to have a coke to your one one also." After some time, he gets nervous and gets up and says, "I'm going to have a coke to your one one also." And they say yes. They say yes. They say yes. And they say yes. 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 Uh, what people's, what human qualities on a relative level you appreciate? Courage, I think. If you have those, the rest will come by itself. If you are compassionate without courage, it won't work. And if you are wise without joyfulness, people will run away. So I think that's the most important. These two things are most important: courage and 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 joyfulness. If you have those, you get everything else. They also correspond to a very deep understanding of mind's essence. Fearlessness comes when knowing that mind is indestructible space. 
enjoy when we see the play of that space, you know, from the level of fearlessness. So they actually correspond to the true state and the joy state. And of course, from there, on the level of relative and ordinary, you don't make mistakes, right? Good question. Uh, pure view, how to combine it with uh, necess necessity sometimes to criticize and to show unpleasant sides of some phenomena, so some things. Well, pure view doesn't mean that people are Buddhas now. It means they have the potential. And the thing is to learn to always see people's potential while still directing them in where one thinks they should be. This is, I mean, this is real constructive. Yeah. If we just dream about them and stuff like that and we don't get involved, then this is not, we don't show an example, that's not so good. But actually, you know, the, myself, you know, I found that the best way to inspire people is by working harder yourself. It's, that's one of the reasons that the Israelis beat the Arabs every time, even though there is 40 Arabs for every Israeli is that the Israelis have the officers out in front and the Arabs have them behind. <laughs> so, you know, what, I mean, you know, the people who, you know, the people who do the things and the people who have the responsibility have to be out front, they have to be actively doing the things, then everybody will follow and also do. And it's also one's job then to make sure that people will, you know, they will notice how strong they are, how capable they are how many possibilities they have themselves. That's the way to teach them. So that's, yeah, that's the thing. Example is best and friendship, very important. Because you have to, if you don't like people, you know, and people don't feel that, then even the best example doesn't catch, then it's just something you're looking at. So liking, having a good bond to each other and trusting each other also on a daily level is really important. One must be identified around the same cause, one must be convinced that it's all right. And if one is that, the human being is actually capable of going beyond one's own short-sighted, egotistical interests and do something for the totality and into the future. The whole idea, social idea, shows that. Uh, Buddha aspects are often, sometimes Buddha aspects often perceived uh, qualities of uh, solving the problems on relative level. For instance, uh, Green Tara for family relationship, Manjushri for uh, examinations. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, to what extent this is traditional uh, Tibetan superstition and uh, to what extent it really works and yeah it works like it's like everything else it's ring and hook if the karmic ring is there if it's possible karmically if one has built up the causes for it these can be the effects that make it actually happen that actually catch the hook. so they're good they're like a catalyst you can say because if you don't have it in your karma, you know, no Buddha, Buddha can do anything. But because we've been living countless lives and, you know, we have all kinds of impressions in our subconscious, then the Buddhas can learn to do quite a lot, can do quite a lot. So it's like, what to say? It's, well, it works. I mean, I, I definitely think it works. In my life, it's worked always. Uh, may have had an old connection and I think only in cases where you really feel open and so on where there is some kind of feeling of magnetism that then it happens and it may be Buddhist it may also be something else I mean a lot of people who have a Christian background you know they lack a Maria figure because the, the male the Buddhist universe is so male right they can understand the logic, you know, of what we teach and so on, but they still get disturbed if there is, you know, if, if something emotional is lacking. And I think especially the people who have their problems on the level of family and partnership and so on, are the kind who would talk to their mother about it, not to their father. And therefore I think they're especially open to the different forms of liberators. That's what I think, while for the 
more active outgoing things they will go black coat mahakala stuff like that and more abstract love and so on they'll probably go for loving eyes less practical more abstract so that's what i think i think it's also the mother father roles the mother father roles that are archetypal and they work on every level some things you tell to mother some things you tell to father right <laughs> And uh, another question, we have a refuge tree, yes. but not uh, many explanations about all these aspects, all these clothes, no. ornaments. No. Is, it, is it so no. important no. and uh, are we getting everything if we don't know? No, most of the, most of the blessing and everything is subconscious. They, are, they work, you know, on the flow of energies in the body, stimulates the different centers and so on. For most of it, you don't need a long intellectual explanation. Generally, you should always have so much explanation that you have trust, that you know why it works, that you feel involved, right? That's an important point. If you understand that it's a mirror image of your own mind, if you understand that the lamas in the middle are your blessing power, the yidams in front are your inspiration, the Buddhas to the left are your state of enlightenment. The books behind are your way. And the, well, uh, the Bodhisattvas are your different activities and so on. And that the protectors underneath is your power. If you know that, you'll be at home. You'll receive the right impression. Of course, you can study and you should. There are explanations to everything. But the moments of oneness and best joy and, and deep relaxation don't come when you think of that, it comes when you just melt together with it as a total thing. Where you experience body, speech and mind, you know, inside and outside becoming one. So, it works like that. И я заметил, что у нас здесь есть представитель церкви. Я спасибо за то, что пришли. Я этому очень рад. В чем, в конце концов, видит буддист смысл 
So, how does a Buddhist uh, see the meaning of uh, his or her personal life in the end, or finally? Well, or I think most of us, I mean, there's no set way of thinking, but I think we all want to reach a level from where we can benefit all beings. Я думаю, что нет какого-то отчета, одного определения этого, но я думаю, что мы все хотим достичь такого уровня, с которым мы могли бы приносить пользу всем существам. Говорится, мы часто говорили о том, что буддизм является религиозным учением. Так ли это на самом деле, как правда сказать? Потому что религия, как знает весь мир цивилизованный, это то, что соединяет одно с другим. So you said that uh, Buddhism is a religious teaching, and uh, is it really true? Because as the whole civilized world knows, uh, religion, religion is something that unites uh, uh, things, and it, uni it should unite uh, the believer and the object of the belief. Yes. No. <laughs> Я думаю, что так, когда мы стали Буддами, значит, мы соединились, не так ли? Вы за Будда. Well, a Buddha is a completely developed state of mind manifesting at different times and different places. Будда это состояние полного развития ума, которое проявляется в разные времена и в разных местах. But inherent in all of us. Но оно присуще, заложено в каждом из нас. Does it mean that uh, there is no object of love as such? No, it means love is everywhere. Uh, нет, это означает, что любовь везде. You may find it outside, you might find it inside, it's the same. Вы можете найти ее снаружи, вы можете найти ее внутри, она одна и та же. В конце концов, можно прийти к такому убеждению, что буддизм — это религия без Бога. Как Бог — это такого Нет. So can we come to the conclusion that uh, the uh, Buddhism is a religion of uh, godlessness? Uh, so we don't have a god as such. No, we believe there are many gods. Uh, нет, мы верим, что есть много богов. We just keep a certain distance because we think they say and do so many funny things. Мы просто держимся от них на определенной дистанции, потому что считаем, что они uh, говорят и делают uh, странные вещи. But we think they are all. But we think they are. You know, we are sure they are there. Но мы уверены, что они есть. We just think that enlightenment is beyond the gods. Мы просто считаем, что просветление вне богов. То есть буддизм остается на том уровне, исповедания, когда мы говорим о Боге, на уровне поэтизма, то есть язычества. So does it mean that uh, when we speak about God, then Buddhism stays on the level of uh, paganism or polytheism? No, I think, well, I wouldn't say so. We see one truth. Я бы, так, я бы так не сказал, мы видим одну истину, о которой я много говорил сегодня днем. And some people take pieces of this truth and call it God. И некоторые люди берут куски этой истины и называют их Богом. Является ли истина, которая касается буддизма, личностью? So is this uh, truth preached by Buddhism a, a person? No, the truth is beyond anything personal. It's like space. Нет, истина вне всего личностного, она как пространство. But there are beings who embody this truth and bring it into the world, and that's the Buddhas. Но есть существа, которые воплощают и олицетворяют эту истину, несут ее в мир, и это Будды. То есть нет такого существа, которому человек мог бы сказать ты, да? So there is no such being to whom a human being could say. You or do in in German do not not not. I think you could. Yes, I mean you could say that to the teacher. I think that так можно сказать учителю. We think if something is only true in one place. Мы думаем, что если что-то является истина только в одном каком-то месте. And not true in another place. И не является истинным в другом месте. Then it must be relative. Значит, это что-то относительное. So if something is personal, it must be relative. И если что-то является личным или личностным, значит, это нечто относительное. Because it's this and not that, it's here and not there. Потому что это это и не то, это здесь, но не там. While on the other hand, if something is absolutely truth, it must be all pervading like space. Если же что-то является абсолютно истинным, значит это должно быть везде сущим или всепроникающим как пространство. And this is what the Christians call God. Okay, but then that's fine. Then we talk about the same. Okay, значит мы говорим об одном и том же. Пожалуйста, отправьте мне.
Там все, все дадут. The question is, how long become a traveling teacher? How did you decide? Yeah, about traveling teachers, uh, there is a natural development on the ground, on the ground where people generally learn to teach in their own centers. Then, if they are good, they get invited to other centers in the area around. And this, of course, I think is wonderful that there is an exchange there. And then after a certain while, you know, then uh, they do so much and so on that I begin to notice them. Or others tell me about them, he's doing this, he's doing that and so on. And then we check them a bit more and then I say, can you please go here, can you please go there and so on. And that's how it develops. We don't want the traveling teachers to travel more than half the year because we don't want them to completely get out of life and so on. They must always be able to handle themselves because we don't want to pay pensions in the end and stuff like that. So we want people to definitely still be able to function in society but half a year they can travel and teach and so on. Uh, traveling teachers are different. Some people trust them because they trust you. Some people are, have some doubts. Mm -hmm. what, what, how we should perceive them? What's well, you see them as, as Dharma friends, as people who hopefully know more or are supposed to know quite a lot, have quite a lot of experience and be, not, uh, be useful examples in their lives and then learn from them what you can. You don't have to see them as a Buddha, but you should think that they teach what the Buddha said. So you don't have to make them into great examples, but you should trust that they are doing their best and that they are your friends, because otherwise you cannot, you cannot use what they teach. Uh, when somebody criticizes, or criticizes even a lot, then somebody becomes unpopular. Uh, the connections are very important to help beings, so how, how to do if somebody is criticized a lot or criticizes, if somebody is very negative in a center, you can tell them, you can say, okay, uh, we don't quite agree with that, we think you have a problem here and we think you should solve it in meditation. Come back in three months. I mean, useful critique where everybody can learn, everybody likes, it's fine, but if it is of a neurotic kind, right, clearly a neurotic or very personal kind, then you say, please come back after a while and tell us and so on, what you found out. 
uh, you're telling that uh, confusion or the stupidity doesn't have uh, transforming power itself? It doesn't have the same power as desire and as and desire and anger. It's more like veils you have to remove. But these people can can have the benefit from diamond veils. Oh yes, sure they can. Sure they can. Uh, very often people who start meditating, they have a tendency to consider their meditating some experiences as a very important pra practice result. Yeah. What is, what is, how to make a difference? Well, I wrote, I wrote something in the back of the way things are. Uh, the very last page where you can actually see how these different things come up. And the, oh, if people think if people think their experiences are very important, you can tell them if it wasn't there before and it won't be there later. Don't make a big thing out of it now. Only what is lasting, right? What doesn't stop, what stays. This is what you can trust. So even the most fantastic things, you know, you cannot trust because you know you are happy because you've been unhappy and so on. They are all like contrasting feelings, one thing to another. Only when you begin to notice a mirror behind the pictures, right? I mean, then you get a steady inner feeling. This you can trust. There's also why the ability to keep the state of meditation longer and longer between the meditation, not get disturbed, but keep the inner peace longer and longer until it locks together. This is the important thing. That's why I also advise many short meditations. We quite often hear from traveling teachers uh, Lama Oli style. Can you, can you comment on this? I'd say that, I mean, we are lay and yogic practitioners, but I didn't invent that. I just brought it into the West. It existed in the East for many years. It was the people up in the mountains. And it was actually these people who preserved the teachings the monasteries did not preserve the teachings. They became places of, of, well, of study in some cases, of learning in some cases, or, but also very much of printing, of commerce, of borrowing money, getting money back. They became very like contact centers to a high degree. Uh, while the mountains where people sat for a long time by themselves and not following monistic, monastic discipline or anything like that, but working with themselves, that's where they had the strong experiences that they passed on. There's also one of the things Kunzik Shamapa says all the time, that actually, um, that actually, you know, um, what to say, I mean, that the, the transmission of the Diamond Way happened in the caves, not, not in the monasteries. Uh, some some of our friends uh, consider that they don't have money and they can't earn it. Uh, what 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 could be an advice for them? Make a flea market. Make a flea market. You know, do something else. They can always get something. And I know, of course, if you are highly educated and you have a rich inner life and a full philosophical background and all and you have to sweep the street, of course you don't like it, right? And you also think that it is no money and it has no meaning, but it is some money and others can live from it and then one can also live from it oneself. I mean, the fact that one is, has a rich inner life and has learned a lot and is very conscious doesn't mean that one doesn't need to work. You know, it doesn't, people need to work, they need to do, and I'll tell you one thing, you can tell them that uh, myself, I spend a lot of time digging holes in the ground. When I didn't have money, I'd go out and dig a hole in the ground for people to put a swimming pool inside and stuff like that. And I've done everything else, all kinds of, cut down trees, I've done all kinds of work. Okay, I haven't done boring work, I must admit. I was always exciting, but I mean, I, I always worked. If I didn't have money, I worked. I didn't go to my parents, even though they always offered. I didn't go anywhere else. I worked. And everybody can work. Hannah and I, the first several years that we started Buddhism, you know, we were working in the night in a school, cleaning up one or two schools that the kids were destroying. They were really difficult kids. and. 
well, you know that everybody should work but otherwise you lose contact you know you are out in the air it's not good uh, unless you want to really meditate of course and drop the work really meditate and then you'll also get what you need but if not then mm, better work uh, are there rules uh, of conduct uh, for the people in the center and what happens with those who are not keeping well, up with the rules? Well actually in Danish government, right, we have, uh, we have an, a, a formula for addressing people. You know, they say in the parliament, they say the most honorary member, they have to say that first and then afterwards is a complete idiot and doesn't know what he's doing but they always have this first bit, they have to put that in the most honorary member, right? And you have to do that, you, we have to keep style. Today, half of the product is the package, is the packaging. You buy the packaging more than the product half the time. So we must have a proper, civilized, nice sounding style when we talk to each other. I will not have rough language. That's one thing. Then we also need proper hygiene. If people always ask us to keep our shoes on, you know, and stuff like that, then maybe we should ch change socks more often and stuff like that. I mean, we should be proper, hygienic, be good, be good examples for Buddhism. I mean, most people, they may not never read a Buddhist book, but they will look at their Buddhist neighbors, right? And either they'll say it functions or they'll say it doesn't function. So we have to be in such a way that people think this is interesting, I would like to share. It looks like people get something good out of that. I really, please, everybody, please, 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 everybody, you know, insist on that in your centers, insist on style, insist on, on personal cleanliness, insist on some kind of civilized hair, you know, insist on clothes without holes. In, I mean, insist that people look sort of, I mean, useful, right? So, uh, yes, but I want to thank you all of you in Luca for the treatment, for the invitation, for all the work we've done. Сначала я хотел поблагодарить всех вас в Луганске за то, как вы нас принимаете, за ваше приглашение, за ту работу, которую вы поделали. На меня произвел глубокое впечатление тот дом, который мы строим для нашего нового центра. Это прекрасная работа. Так, рядом с центром города. Example, even in those that you don't have uh, children. Yeah, but no, but that's, that's not a good, the thing with the children is not a good example. The reason we have no children is we travel all the time. This is not possible. And the fact with the two women is also functions because we travel all the time. If you're in one place, you try to have, it's good to have children. If you try to have several women, you'll probably have a lot of trouble. Hannah and Katy are completely extraordinary here. Even the, even the great teachers like Dujung Rinpoche and Dilgu Chenzi Rinpoche and so on, who had several women, and the 15th Kamapa, and who had several women, they got so much trouble. My women are the best of all. They never make trouble, they like each other. So on the other hand, if they had kids, both of them, and they would start, may they might start to compete to get their child in on the best place. I don't know about that, but without children, it goes very well. Uh, a lot of your students, they're following your example and jumping with the parachuting, uh, but unfortunately, not everybody has the courage. Why people are... No, people People shouldn't do that. People should only do it if they want to. There's, there's no force, there's no pressure on that. Also, I doubt I would do it in East Europe because unless the uh, unless, uh, equipment is, is Western. We had several of our friends, even uh, people from Sevelosk, from, from our 
what are they called from? Our Spetsnaz friends, uh, our Oman friends, right? And one of them even broke his leg because the equipment was not all right. And these are high trained people, right? I said they should try it, so they tried it, but one of them landed badly and broke his leg and stuff like that. I don't think, I wouldn't do it here. I'd do it if you're in the West, or I'd do it if it's Western equipment, otherwise I wouldn't. Causes in former lives, uh, there, are, there is misunderstanding among people, and what people can do in order to avoid this misunderstanding. Well, anything we did, you know, anything harmful we did will make misunderstandings. If we robbed a caravan together, if we stole something together, whatever we did, you know, if it, if it's. You know, if we did something harmful together, we will have trouble together now. So the important thing is to get it out of our system. Uh, you don't have monks in your centers, but some people refuse from some things because of Dharma. Uh, the, from family, from uh, like carrier. Yeah. Do you think this is right? Yes, we don't want monks in our centers because then you have a two-class society. We, we, this has not worked in France, this has not really worked anywhere. Either you have a monastery with monks and nuns, right, doing their thing, or you have lay centers. If you have monks and lay people, the monks feel funny because they can't do what the lay people do. And the lay people feel funny because they have a bad conscience when they enjoy their women and their beer, you know, when the monks are around and can't have the same joys. It doesn't work. It does not work. It never worked. Anywhere you put in a monk to lead a lay center, it didn't work. So I have 30 years of experience. But when our people are refusing to have, like, uh, because of Dharma, family or proper career, do you think this is right? No, I think people should. It depends on people themselves. It depends on what they did in former lives. I mean, some people uh, were nomads in former lives and so on, and, and they will have a woman here and a woman there, but they will probably not start solid uh, centers like or solid families. And other people were like farmers or they lived in one place and so on, and they, they have a, their minds function differently. They function in another way. They can start families and so on. A lot of this is former lives. A lot of people who were nomads in former lives, they have troubles, or traders moving everywhere. They have trouble staying with one family and one, one woman or so on. I think that's very much the reason. No, I'm happy when people are together, when they have families, when they... Yeah, I think that's good. And what you can advise to such a couple when somebody in the couple is uh, like this, uh, more Dharma-oriented, and another one is... <coughs> More like yeah, worldly, more worldly. Yeah. Well, I'd only say that um, the work, f uh, the spiritual work, is the most important. It is, you know, if people stop, it's usually if women stop uh, practicing because say uh, the husband is jealous of their development, right, which can happen, or men start develop, stop developing because the women want their whole attention and so on, the marriage will not last. They will fall apart, you know, they will... Uh, most important is to give each other a chance to grow and develop and move on. If we take that away from each other, uh, marriage is doomed. Because it's actually, we're trying to be, have control, we're trying to make, uh, do something against the interest of the partner and so on, and this is not good. It will not work. Uh, when you started uh, your job in the West, there were little of organization. Now we have a lot of helpers and they, are, they want to do everything very organized. Um, is it in contradiction? This organization with the principle of uh, trust in space and spontaneity of everything? No, it's in contradiction to wasting one's time. <laughs> I think actually that the best thing, I think that first the basic view is the old anarchist view, no power to nobody, right? 
That's the basic one. Then coming out from that, then we see that without we we need as much organization as is necessary to make things go around, but we mustn't get so much that it becomes a thing in itself. That as much as necessary, but as little as possible. Right? This is what we what we have to look for. So I would say, I mean, I'm always I'm always watching out. It doesn't get too organized, and that we change people and change positions much. I always do that. Uh, all the people who are traveling with you, they feel that uh, space and uh, time is changing. And for instance, for week, uh, there are so many events that uh, might happen in a uh, few months in uh, normal life. Is this your normal state? I'm like that all the time. I'm like that all the time. I wear everybody down. I mean, the freshest, youngest people get on the tour. They, after one week, you know, they, uh, after two weeks, they have to go home, right? And stuff like that. Well, not everybody. We have a few who can who can handle it, right? But in most cases, it wears people down. It's very hard work. Just traveling, new bed every day, you know, new groups, new people, new situations, everything. It is hard work. Luckily, we who do it can handle it, right? But a lot of people can't. It's hard. Uh, whether, whether you will have like change of your status uh, in the lineage after after Rinpoche left? Yeah, I have to do more now. I mean, we ha I have to do things I don't really like. I have to... What? What do I do? Yeah, I, they say I'm the oldest now. <laughs> I'm the oldest. I, everybody's granddaddy. Well, I don't quite feel like that, but I am the oldest. It's true. But the thing I have to do now is actually I sometimes have to ask for money and stuff like that. And I always try to avoid that because Rinpoche left us such expensive projects, right? He left us all these enormous stupas that we have to build, you know, and, and that was his vision more than mine, right? I'm sure he was right, but I mean, it leaves me in a funny state because I, of course, I, I'll fulfill everything he did, but it's, I would rather talk to my friends, to, to, to 50 friends like now, you know, than I talk to one famous man who will give some money and so on, right? It's not my style. I'm social democrat in my heart. I can't really, I can't handle that. But anyway, that's that's one thing that's come up. So I have to do more official, formal things that I basically don't like. But I'm educated. I know how to do them, so I can. It's just, it's not so. It's necessary, right? It's not from my heart. It's from my head. <laughs> Uh, is it possible in a center such an open demonstration of relations like love or unlove and somebody don't like somebody or some yeah making jokes that are painful? No, we shouldn't have. It's, we should be grown up and we shouldn't, you know, we should try to be as good to each other as we can and if we shouldn't just, I mean, if we want to make love we should just close the door behind us, right? I mean, of course, we're human beings and we are happy, but I mean, if we're in the center, we're sort of group oriented. We have to be aware of the group and somehow uh, spread out and spread the energy out to the group. If everybody just sits with themselves, you know what I mean, and somebody new comes in, they, they get no contact, they get no help. So this, I think we should, we should make sure that we are there for everybody. And then we have our happy nights, or we have our discussions, but they are not in the center. Uh, you like uh, another trip is coming to an end in Ukraine. Uh, are you satisfied with the uh, with development results? And I'm happy. I'm satisfied. I'm touched. I think you do a very good job. I'm really, really, very glad about your work. I saw good developments in all kinds of places. Crimea, it seems we're not so sure about Vilo's project there, what's happening, right? What is happening there, it would be good if we could get it because, you know, it's good to have a place like that, but I don't know what's happening. 
but except for that, I don't know if anybody knows, do you know? Vilos project, uh, that land there on the Crimea? I don't know anything. No, okay. So except for that, I think I have an idea of everything. I was glad about Odessa, that was nice. Uh, Depno Petrovsk, you know, I mean, all the places I liked. I'm glad. And can you tell Zed a few words about uh, the retreat center for Ukraine? Retreat center? Yeah. Yes, we would, I mean, we would like to have maybe somewhere near Uskorod a piece of land that where we can go and where people can you know be in a healthy situation and build some huts or houses and stuff like that but the prices so far have been ridiculous I mean we've been bu buying hectares in in Poland till recently for two three hundred dollars a hectare right and then we hear here about five to eight thousand you know it is not it's 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 not all right we will go out now and we will check more. But the area around Uskorod has the Carpathians and the Transcarpathians. And if we can get something there, that would be wonderful. I do for that whatever I can. It's just, you know, I mean, we, we can't pay, you know, ridiculous prices. Right. So uh, we have, people. yeah. Uh, people from central Ukraine, they are saying that it's too, too far, Uzgrud is too far. I know, but we'll probably have one in this area also and so on. But because it is a big country, the same way that Russia and also the USA will have different centers because you just can't fly six hours across America to get to a center, right? So we have to get in the middle, maybe the middle, north and south, New York and somewhere between San Francisco and Los Angeles, we have to get places, we just have to get them. It's just, it costs money. I don't know. We work what we can, we do what we can, but it's difficult. We also just lost a very beautiful center in, in London. But there was half a million euros more than we could pay, you know, I mean, so what to do, right? But we, we stand together now, we get strong all the time, and we'll get the right things when they're there. We're trying to sell Yavornik because it's a tourist place and it's not the best tourists who go there, right? And so on, find something else and we'll, we'll find something. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, I hope it's useful. Thanks a lot. Yeah.